Hello friends, this video on data handling part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we introduce another concept of mode. Now, till now we have learned about arithmetic mean or mean. Now calculating mean is not enough in all the cases. Now we might encounter scenarios where calculating mean doesn't help us. So let us take an example of such a scenario. Let us say that uh, this shopkeeper, he observes that the sale for different items in his stationery shop for a particular year was this. That is in, in the last year or in this year, the number of books that he sold was maybe 750, pens was 45,000, pencils 50,000. So he actually sold 50,000 pencils from his shop. Glitter pens 30, glue 610, chart paper 71 and so on. So the, this is a list which tells how, may, how much was the sale for each of the items in his stationery shop. Now just to keep things simple, let us now assume that his profit margin is more or less same, same for all these different items. Now looking at this data, how should he approach to buy things for his shop for the next year? How should he manage his inventory so that he, uh, you know, he is in profit the next year? So what would be an, a wise decision for the shopkeeper to do? Now, see, there is there, there could be many different approaches. So let us say that he could have approach one. So his approach one could be, let us find the mean of this data. So finding mean of this data, so if you find the mean, the mean would be something like this 750 plus 45,000 plus 50,000 plus 30 plus 610 plus 71 divided by how many items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So divided by 6. So this value comes out to be 16,076. So this is the approximate value that he gets. So what does this mean? This means that if we assume that all the items were sold in equal numbers, then each item sold were 16,076. So if we assume that everything was sold equally, so we, then in that case, we can say that 16,076 glitter pens were sold, 16,076 pencils were sold, 16,076 glue were sold and so on. So therefore, one option is that for the next year, he purchases 16,076 number of all the items, right? So he has calculated the mean from this data and then in the next year, he plans that, okay, so this year, let me do one thing. Let me purchase all these items for my shop I mean, to, you know, to build the inventory in the shop. So let me purchase all the items, but this time I will purchase everything these many numbers. So I will purchase 16,076 books. I will purchase 16,076 pens, pens, pencils, glitter pens, glue, chart paper, all of them 16,076 number. So his approach one would be that he purchases 16,076 number of each item. So do you think that this is a wise decision? Because this year 45,000 pens were sold and next year he is planning to buy only 16,076 pens. So is that a wise decision? No, because he will very quickly run out of stock. Similarly, this time only 30 glitter pens were sold and next year he is planning to buy 16,076 glitter pens. So what is going to happen? A lot of glitter pens will remain in stock. It will just remain in his shop. They will not get sold. So do you think that this is a wise decision? No. So that means in this scenario, finding the mean was not the right thing that we had to do. So then what is that thing that we will have to calculate out of this data to find out which are those items which are selling fast, which are those items which are moving fast, which are those items which are in more demand. So, so that we can buy those items more and the items which are not getting sold, we do not buy, buy those items a lot. So what would be a better approach? So let us look at 
and let us in, in fact understand the better approach now. So the better approach is that he analyzes which items are sold more. So what does he find? He finds that there are certain items which are sold more. What are those items? In this case, those items are pencils because pencils have the highest sale. The next sale is of the pens. The next sale is for the books and the next sale is for the glue. So he finds that pencils, pens, books and glue, they have more, they are like fast moving items. So the shopkeeper decides not to buy glitter pens or chart paper because their sale is very very less. So he decides that okay this time I will not buy glitter pens or chart paper at all because anyways only 30 or 40 are being sold. So that's okay. Let me not buy them. Instead let me buy more pencils and pens and books and glue. Right. So this approach is definitely going to be a better approach. Right. In this case, he will not have a lot of uh, items getting accumulated in his shop without being sold. So that would not happen. Right. But the question is, how does he find those items which are being sold more? So to find that, he needs to find out that particular data from the table that corresponds to more frequency. That means that happens more often. So by looking at the data here, you can very easily say that pencils are the fastest moving items here. Right? Why? Because the number of pencils that are getting sold is huge. The number of times when you say pencils is 50,000, that means pencils got sold 50,000 number of times. So this 50,000 basically represents the number of times pencil got sold. So it is nothing but the frequency of pencil. And this 50,000 is called the mode of the data. So mode always represents that data which corresponds to maximum frequency or that data which gets repeated maximum number of times. So mode indicates the most frequently occurring data in a group. Right now, now you understand, right? That why do we need to find the most frequently occurring data? Because in a lot of situation, like the situation of the shopkeeper, you need to know that particular data which occurs more often. So we, we can also say that mode also tells us the central tendency of the group of data, but in a different sense than that of median, than, uh, than that of mean. For example, when we were talking about mean, mean was like finding out an average. So it used to tell us a central tendency of the data because that number used to lie somewhere between the smaller number and the bigger number. So that means it used to tell us the central tendency. In this case also mode tells us the central tendency because it basically tells about that data which is getting repeated most of the times. So basically that data is happening most of the times. When you look at this example, what do you see? Let us, let's imagine a situation that there is a shopkeeper and the shopkeeper is selling different things. Sometimes books, sometimes pen, sometimes pencil and so on. Now, throughout a year, so the entire year, you just kept observing that shopkeeper and you found that most of the times, more than half of the times, he was selling a pencil, right? So that pencil corresponds to the data that occurs maximum number of times. So when you look at the overall set of data, which data is more dominating? Pencil, because that, that happened most of the times. So that way is pencil was like the central tendency of the group of data because pencil was happening or pencil was getting repeated most of the times. So that means mode also represents the central tendency of a group of data but in a different way than that of arithmetic mean. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.